Exodus the 15th chapter and the 23rd verse. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of, that, uh, of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And uh, cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, they were made sweet. There he made for them a statue, an ordinance, an ordinance, and there he proved them. And he said, if thou wilt willingly hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, and there were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. I want to talk about kingdom community testing. I want to talk about this because we see, as we've talked about historically, that Israel was formed in the belly of Egypt. But God, through his covenant with Abraham, is looking for not only a man, but a community to represent his presence in the earth. Don't have time to go all the way back through it, but we know that he made a covenant with Abraham and said, out of Abraham, I will bless the nations of the world and out of the, all the communities of the earth shall be blessed. So God's covenant with Abraham was not about Abraham. It was about community that God wants to bless his people. He wants a representation of his presence in the earth with a people. So God chooses uh, Abraham to start this covenant. And now we're here at the point where Joseph has gone into Egypt. Um, uh, Joseph is now along with his 12 brothers uh, in the land of Goshen in Egypt and they begin to multiply grow and at the time um, they are multiplying and growing uh, a new Pharaoh arises that knows not Joseph of course this Pharaoh now brings about pain and destruction on the children of Israel in so much that they cry out to God and say get us out of here not only that, but the plagues that came upon Egypt made the Egyptians say, we need to get you out of here. So God set up sovereignly the circumstances that this nation, this community will begin to move into a place where they could become an independent community that will represent God, that will represent his presence and to represent his power in the earth. We see that they, last week we talked about the fact that they moved out of Egypt through the Passover. They moved because the death angel had moved upon Egypt and the firstborn of every Egyptian had died and they were, they, um, were sorely afraid and so they ejected uh, the uh, Israelites. Not only did they eject them, but they paid them to leave a bounty to get up out of there. Now, uh, here's the deal. As God begins to to bring these people and Moses begins to lead these people into the wilderness you understand that they're still very immature that they are a baby community that they have not yet grown and matured and evolved to the place where they could become the mighty nation that God intended for them to come they are in their infancy at this time so God uh, through his sovereign wisdom uh, does not move them directly into the promise but see he has to take them through a process in order to get them matured and get them ready to go inhabit the land that he has for them and here is something we really need to understand God has so many promises for us he has so much more that he wants to do for us but God wants us to get to a place personally and as a people People where we develop to a point where he can trust us with the blessings that he wants to give us. You cannot trust immature babies with an inheritance. You have to allow them to grow. You have to allow them to be uh, put through a process. They have to maturate.
great. And they have to come to a place mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to where they can handle the responsibility that it takes in order to become a people, a nation, a community. And so it takes maturity. It takes a process of development for us to get from uh, immaturity to maturity. And we have to be mature in order to handle the promised land. God promised them that he was going to take them to the promised land, but he could not give them the promised land as long as they were children. You do not give babies great responsibility. You do not give infants and immature babies great. You don't give your baby a keys to the car. You don't give your baby uh, the opportunity to run your house, I hope. Uh, you, you don't give children uh, great responsibility. You have to give them responsibility a little at a time. You have to allow them to mature you got to allow them to grow. And parents, you know, you just can't lay your hands on your children and tell them to grow up. It won't happen. Speak in tongues, do whatever you want to do. Pray, put the Bible on their head, uh, um, um, pray. But guess what? Maturity takes time. I'm going to say that again. Maturity takes time. Maturity is not going to happen overnight. God is supernatural, but man is natural. And in order for man to become what God wants them to be, is a, is going to take a process of time. Here too, we have the wilderness experience. Now, the wilderness experience in this community is for their development. As the children of Israel migrated through the wilderness, they would be put through a process or they would be put through a test. Now, here's what we don't want to hear in the body of Christ a lot. You cannot grow and mature without being tested. You want, we want the diploma, but do we want the test? We want the graduation celebration, but are we willing to do the work and pass the test? It is only when you are challenged, it is only when you are put into, uh, engaged into a process, and it's only when you pass the test, pass the exam, pass the, uh, turning in your work, and a challenge that you get the chance to celebrate the accomplishment of graduation. Many of our students uh, during this COVID situation have been denied full access to the proper rituals of graduation. And that's terrible, but and, and, and even though they're going to get their paperwork, uh, they, they've not had the experience of me, what many of us had in celebrating uh, this great accomplishment. Yet, and still, you know that you deserve the diploma. You know you got it. And if you didn't get it in six months, it took you uh, uh, about eight years, nine years, ten years, whatever that was, to get to the place where you deserve to say, I'm a graduate. Well, it's the same thing spiritually. I don't understand why we think that uh, th these principles don't apply to our spiritual life as well as they apply to our physical life. We just want to turn around. We want somebody to lay hands on us. We want somebody to put some oil on us. We want somebody to pray over us and zap, bam, bang, it's done. It doesn't happen like that. That's why God created community. That's why you have to get involved in community. That's why you have to um, uh, participate in community. That's why you have to invest in community. That's why you have to be beholden to a community because this process that God has established, just like he did with the children of Israel, is a necessary process for your development. You cannot go into the promised land and fight giants as a child. You have to become mature if you're going to fight giants. And Israel found this out in their first attempt to go into the promised land. They wanted the promise, but they were not ready for the promise. They wanted the, the land of milk and honey. We want the land of milk and honey, but many of us are blaming God and saying, well, God won't give it to us, but we never question the reason why he can't give it to us in the first place. So instead of us questioning what God is going to do and telling God what he promised us, why don't we live up to the promises we made to God? And why don't we uh, engage and cooperate with God so God can allow uh, the process of 
maturation and development to take place in our life so that now we are well able uh, to take the promises that God has given us. So with all of us, we do not like tests. We, we don't like to be tested. We, we don't like the challenge of the test that facilitates our growth in our relationship with God. That's why I keep telling people, listen to me, uh, hear the voice of the Lord. You cannot uh, avoid the test and still grow spiritually. You have to embrace the test. I didn't say you had to like it. I don't like tests. You is only natural to not want the test. Everybody dreads the exam. Everybody dreads the quizzes, and everybody dreads um, the 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 challenge of whether or not you're gonna pass. I remember I went to get my driver's license. They said you got to take a test. I said, Oh Lord, uh, you know I hate it. I was nervous, and I know how to drive, but them tests are, are kind of tricky. They they set them up to trick you, and um, I think the first time I took the test, I missed it by one. I was all the pieces. But, but I'm trying to help you to understand that, that, that none of us like the test. But the test is necessary to qualify you for the benefits that you say you want. If you don't pass the test, you don't qualify. I got a niece that's uh, just graduated from law school, but she still got to go take the bar exam. She will not become a bona fide qualified lawyer unless she pass the test. She has been through a grueling four, uh, eight years or nine years of, of studies, but guess what? She, they don't care about the last eight years. They want her to pass the bar exam. And so in order for you to be qualified, see, see, we want to, ex we want the benefit. You know, it's like these people that go online and get doctorate degrees and these people that buy diplomas and these people that buy license. You know, you can go online and buy you a degree and nobody will ever check to see if your degree is authentic. Nobody will ch check the source or the foundation by which you got it. Everybody will just accept the fact that you got a certificate on the wall. Now, uh, uh, here's the deal. That, you can take the easy way out, but guess what? Guess what? The shortcut, you'll never be fulfilled, you'll never be authentic, and nobody can ever have confidence in you because you took the shortcut. People who do what they're supposed to pay their dues. Uh, people who go through the process. Who, people who pay the price. People who earn their degrees are not too happy about those that take shortcuts and get theirs cheap. Nobody values anything that you get cheap. Anything worth having is worth paying for. Anything worth having is you ought to be glad to pay the price. I remember was a time where people took pride in earning something. We, we took pride in, in, in the fact that we wouldn't let nobody else take care of our family. We wouldn't let nobody give us a handout. We wouldn't take, we call it charity. We, we wanted to earn ours. We wanted to be, feel good about the fact that we did what was necessary to take care of ourselves and those that we love. Now, people will take a hand out in a minute. Now, and listen, listen, I'm not talking about the stimulus. Go on, take your stimulus and, uh, and, and, and give your tithes and offer, but, but I mean, if they're going to give it to you, take it, but don't sit there and, and make yourself dependent upon a system or a government or somebody that don't even like you to take care of you. So, so, so don't throw me no bone because I need to be able to go and get my own meat. Y'all ain't talking. I, I, I don't need you to throw me some fish. If I need it right now, I'll take it. But guess what? I'm not going to sit here and wait for you to bring me another piece of fish. I got to go learn how to fish. So God is, guess what? God is taking Israel through this same process and I hope we can see it today. They come to a place called Mara where the water is bitter. And their first reaction, and I can't be mad with them, because here it is, 
You got all these people. Everybody's thirsty. You've been traveling and you're going through. And so now your first opportunity to get some relief and get some water, you run into a place called Myra where the water is bitter. Natural, naturally, uh, one would have been guilty of, of the, you know, complaining murmuring more than once. And you, you know, he, here is uh, the fact that in their immaturity, God's people would fail over and over again, creating dismay for God and stress and heavy burden for their leader. They come to this place called Mara where the water is bitter. Their first reaction is natural, one that we have all been guilty of more than once. Now, you know, we love the Lord, the Lord loves us, but many of us, including me, have caught ourselves in a bad situation because things that were not comfortable. We, we had a situation, and guess what we did? We murmured and we complained. You didn't even realize you were complaining and, 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 and down and talking negative the whole time. And you had to catch yourself and say, wow, uh, I'm complaining. I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in a bad mood. Uh, uh, I'm going through this situation and I'm, 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 I'm looking at it from a place of complaints and murmuring. Well, we've all done that. And, and if you don't watch yourself now, I don't care if you've been saved 50 years, every now and then, something will pop up and you'll go to complaining and you, you'll have a bad attitude and a bad disposition about what you're going through and you're realizing uh, and, 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 the, and the difference in those of us that are more mature, we catch ourselves. We're like, oh, I'm, I'm, doing it, I'm doing it again. And then we turn our murmuring into praise. We turn our murmuring into thanksgiving. We change our murmuring into an attitude of gratitude. But immature children in God and immature people, they over and over again, like the children of Israel, every time they ran into a challenge, they murmured, they complained, they murmured against uh, Moses saying, what shall we drink? Not realizing that God chose the route that they took and it was God that gave Moses the solution. At the end of the day, what you have to understand, this is a place of their testing. This is a place where they are going to be proven. Uh, when you look at verse 25, it says, uh, if they, uh, there he made for them a statue, a ordinance, and there he proved them. See, you, you, you don't have the right to test God. You're the one taking the test. You're the one. And so God intentionally took them to this bitter water because God wanted to prove them. And I can't say it enough. You don't have to prove God. God is proving you. You don't have to test God. I'm going to test God and see what he's going to do. You ain't got to test God. He already know what he can do and he already know how to do it. He know when to do, what to do, and he never fails. Your question is not what is God going to do, your question should be am I going to pass this test? Am I going to do it in the midst of uh, my problem, in the midst of this situation? Am I going to pass this test or am I going to fail this test? Many of us don't realize we're being tested right now. Many of us don't even realize that COVID-19 is a test. It's just another test that we're going through. And guess what? You're not going to prove whether or not God is a healer. God is going to prove whether or not you can trust him in the midst of it. You're not proving God. God's going to prove you in your situation and you're going to prove yourself because you're going to find out things about yourself in this test that you thought you were fixed. You thought you had it together. You thought you were good, but this test is showing you 
you were not really where you thought you were. On the other hand, this test is showing people, hey, I'm going to pass this test. I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to honor God in the midst of this test. I'm going to pass this test with flying colors. I'm going to have the right spirit. I'm going to have the right attitude. I'm going to keep a praise in my mouth. I'm going to keep gratitude in my mouth. I'm going to keep thanksgiving in my mouth. I'm going to keep serving others. Keep giving. Keep loving. Keep doing those things that God has called me to do because I'm going to pass this test because believe it or not this is not a test I want to take over again if there's anything worse than taking a test is having to take it over again them people told me they said listen you if you fail this driving test you can't you if you fail it again you can't take another one for six months I said you're gonna take my license for six months I, so now I'm really messed up because because uh, you know you, 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 all the pieces now you if you don't pass this time I remember when I went to get my uh, insurance license health and and the other one uh, anyway I went to get the license man you can't listen them tests cost a lot of money and uh, you sitting there and you can't if, if you fail it you got to take it over and pay some more money and if you fail it again they make you wait a year or how long to take that test again you man listen it, it, it passed the test the first time because you, you don't want to have to take it again. I'm trying to pass the test. Listen, I want to pass this COVID test. I want to pass the test of faithfulness. I want to I want to pass the test of commitment. I want to pass the test uh, with flying colors because I don't want to go this way again. Let's go on to something better. And so in, in verse chapter 16, verse 2, the whole congregation of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to God, and listen to this, this is a baby talking. Listen to their attitude. Now, they've already been tested. And when you read the text, the Bible said, and then God led them after he uh, 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 gave them good water at Mara, he led them to a place where there were palm trees and plenty of fresh water. Here's what I'm trying to say. The fresh water was there all the time. God could have took them to the fresh water and never allowed them to have the experience of the bitter water. But sometimes God got to test you with the bitter so you can be better. I wish I, I wish I could really preach this today, but sometimes you got to deal with the bitter before you're going to get better. And I'm, I'm challenging those of you today, don't get bitter, get better. And, and guess what? You got to have the right attitude with the bitter situation before you get to a better situation. And guess what? Sometimes it ain't the water that you drink in this bitter. Sometimes it's a bitter person trying to drink the water. You got to understand that it does not make sense sense for you to get bitter God is trying to make you better so the children of Israel said unto them would God that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt now hold on what you want what you want can't please you when you was in Egypt under strong bondage oh God deliver us God said okay I'm going to deliver you by a mighty hand now you delivered and isn't that childish? They don't know what they want. You can't please them. If you give them hot, they want cold. If they, if, if you, if they beg you to go to the zoo, they get to the zoo and they hot, they want to go home. You, you can't please them. No matter what you, I don't understand why some of y'all take a two or three year old to Disney World. They ain't even gonna remember. They can't ride half the rides, and they gonna be agitated and 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 aggravated the whole time. You ever took your kid to the mall? You go to the second store. I wanna go home. I I wanna go home. I'm tired. Pick me up. I can't walk. You can't please kids. And so these kids, they, they, they beg to get out of Egypt. Now God is getting them in the process of their deliverance. And now they're saying stuff like this. You know what? I would that God would have left us where he had us. Uh, and, and, and we could have died by the hand. Now, we wish, and how crazy is this? We wish the Lord would have killed us in Egypt. 
Okay. Uh, we wish the Lord would have killed us. You know, we say some dumb stuff when we're immature. You, you, you look back over your life and look at the dumb things you said and the dumb things you've done because you simply didn't have no sense. You, you thought you was grown and you, and, and you thought you had it going on until you, until you went through something and you found out you weren't really who you thought you were. And so he's sitting there talking about, I wish we had a died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and we did eat our bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into the wilderness, listen, to kill us with hunger. Now, God done delivered you out of the hell you were in. God is taking you to the place of promise. And you sitting here talking about, uh, well, you know, the Lord brought us out here to kill us. I want you to understand that is an immature disposition. God did not bring you here. God is not bringing you through what he's brought you through to kill you. He's bringing you through it so he can heal you. He, he is bringing you through it so he can make you better. And you have to understand what God is doing. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, I will bring bread from heaven for you. The people shall go out and gather at certain rate every day. And I may prove them. Here it goes again. I may prove them. God says, I want to prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. I, I want to see what you're going to do. See, you, you don't understand. That trial you got was about God checking you. It was never about the trial. God let you go through the trial so you could see where you really are. God let you go through that test so you could see where you really are. God is allowing you to see. He said, I'm going I'm to prove them. I'm going to let them know that they don't really love me yet. That they're not really ready to be my people like they should be. And he said, so I'm going to prove them. And I'm going to see if they're going to walk in my law or no. You know, sometimes your new uh, job is your test. God said, okay, uh, they've been good. They've been doing what they're supposed to do. So I'm, I'm going to give them favor and I'm going to bless them with a new job. Now, you don't realize that this job is your test. God said, I'm going to see if I bless them, will they still be faithful? Uh -huh, I'm going to see if I, if I give them more money, are they still going to tithe? Uh, if I bless them with this promotion, they're going to still put me first? Are they still going to be involved in community? Or are they going to use the thing that I bless them with as an excuse not to honor me anymore or put me first in their life? God, see, some of you don't even realize your promotion is your test. Some of us don't realize some of the things that we call blessings are really a test to see if we're going to fall more in love with those things or we're going to stay uh, committed to our purpose and the plan that God has for me. I don't care how much money I get. I don't care how what God do in my life. He's still going to get my praise. He's still going to get my commitment. I'm going to stay faithful to him. I'm not going to allow myself to forget where God has brought me from. I'm going to remember that in my days of calamity, God brought me out. You got to understand, even the things that we call blessings could be a test for our own lives. It shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare with uh, which they will bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel, and even then ye shall know that the Lord have brought you out of the land of Israel. So once again, like immature people, they, they murmur against Moses and Aaron for the lack of food and hunger. Never once do we we see them call out to God and exercise their faith in God as the provider and sustainer. The first thing they do is complain instead of pray. The first thing they do is doubt instead of believe. The first thing they do is start talking negative instead of going to God and say, listen, God, we know you brought us out of Egypt. We know you delivered us by a mighty hand. We know you made that bitter water sweet. And because you're God, we know you're not going to let us die here and be hungry. Some of us need to change our attitude in the midst of the COVID and say, God, no matter what this COVID is, we know you're going to bring us out. We're not going to 
complain. We're not going to murmur. We're not going to get an attitude. We're going to lift up our voice and we're going to praise you in the midst of it because we know that you are our God and you're going to bring us out with a mighty hand. You have to understand, never once did they call on God. Never once did they exercise their faith to God as their provider and sustainer. Instead, they began to have attitudes. They spoke negative words against their leader. They spake death and doubt because of their situation. They don't even realize their words will become prophecy that affects their destiny. You better be careful what comes out of your mouth. You need to guard your words and use them very scarcely when it comes to this situation that we're in. You need to uh, uh, understand that the words you speak in situations like this will become your own destiny. They will become your prophecy. And they kept saying it over over and over again, we're going to die in this wilderness. Uh, oh, we're we going to die in this wilderness. Uh, we're going to die in this wilderness. They kept saying it over and over again. They failed the test over and over again. And guess what happened to them? They died in the wilderness. You have what you keep saying. You have what you keep believing. You have what you keep it's going whatever you say, you going to bring it to pass. Can't nobody prophesy nothing over my life. I, can't nobody dictate what God's going to do in my life. I will declare uh, the word of the Lord over my life. You listen, you can't prophesy. I already prophesied. I'm blessed. I'm I'm the, I'm blessed from my head to my toe. I'm blessed from the inside out. I'm walking in the prosperity of God. The favor of God is upon my life. You can't stop the blessings of God. Hate all you want to. God is going to bless me. See, you got to learn how to prophesy over your own life. Stop waiting for people to tell you what God going to do. You stand up and decree and declare the word of the Lord over your life. And guess what? You stand on God's word for your life. And guess what? No matter what the enemies say, God's going to bless you because you had faith and confidence in his word and not in the circumstances. Don't let people dictate to you where you're going in this life. You ought to decree and declare. I'm coming out of this COVID better than I went in. Yeah, it's been tough, but I'm going to be better. My praise, my anointing, my blessing is going to be greater when I come out. That ought to be your declaration. Don't nobody want to hear, woe is me. I'm so pitiful. I'm so sad. Y'all don't understand. This don't make no sense. I'm hurting. Listen, in spite of their unbelief, and failure to trust God. See, because they're immature, see, because they, God understands you're a baby. You know, you, don't, you really don't know the impact of what you're doing when you're childish. So God, like I have, you know, your, your baby puke on you, throw up on you, you know, your baby poop on you, you know, your baby go through the house and pull out pans and, you know, all into everything. Every time you turn around, you know, you a little hot, but you just clean it up, right? Because you know they're a baby, right? You, they, they, they mess up some, you just clean it up. They pull the pots out the the, the, the drawer, you put them back. They, they, you know, you, you, you do what you need to do because they babies, right? But when they get 15 and 11 and 12 and they try, something else going to happen to them. But, but while they're babies, you have mercy on them. While, you have, while they're babies, you are more lenient. And this is what God was doing with the children of Israel. He was just being a little bit more lenient on them because he knew they were immature. So God proves that in spite of their failure to trust him, God does his part. He proves himself as the provider. He shows his grace and mercy towards his people. He is the God of supernatural provision. He proves to them that he is the God of daily provision. He proves to them that he's the God of sufficient provision. He proves to them that he is the God of constant and consistent provision provision. God always proves himself. We serve a God that never fails. We serve a God that never sleeps. We serve a God that never slumps, slumbers. And let's what? Even though we're inconsistent, 
He is always consistent. You can always count on God. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. What God says, he's going to do his part. He's going to perform his word. He's going to do what he said. Guess what? You can't blame God. God is faithful. Exodus 17, 1. I got to get out of here. I'm, on, I'm closing in a minute. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, they pitched in Raphidon. And there was no water. Here we go again for the people to drink. Wherefore, okay, listen. Why are we back at the water? Because they failed. Right? You, you failed the first water test, so we got to... You know, somebody said, well, why I keep going in this same circle? Because you keep failing. Why this keep happening over and over again? Because you failed the last time. God is saying, listen, I'm been give I keep giving you this test. I don't want to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. But you don't understand until you pass this test, I can't let you go to the next grade. Some of y'all need to know you've been retained every year. And you can't understand why you're in the same spot over and over and over again. Because you failed the last test, God can't let you go, right? You know, it's like some of these guys that are athletes. The teacher just let them go. They don't pass no test. They don't do no work. They get up uh, and go, uh, in college and they playing football and they get hurt and they can't read a McDonald's sign. Do you ever wonder why they put the, the pictures of the, of the sandwiches on the sign? Some people can't read the words. They, had to, they can only tell by the picture. You, you got people who done got on to college and can't read a McDonald's sign. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, so, wherefore, the people, here we go again, the people chat. Now, you, you, you failed the last water test. Now you come to the next water test. And here you go. They argue with Moses. They said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, why y'all pressuring me? Why y'all chatting with me? Why y'all arguing with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? He said, you keep on plucking God's nerve. God trying to bless you and get you to the next level and you getting on God's nerves right now because here you go again with the same attitude and you getting ready to fail another test. And the people thirsted for water and the people murmured against Moses and saying, wherefore is it that thou hast brought us out of Egypt? Here they go again, the same thing. They didn't learn the last time. God blessed them the last time. God brought them out the last time. Do you know that some people, no matter how God blessed them, that next time they get into a situation, they go right back to the same attitude? Now, God done delivered you time after time again, even when you didn't deserve it. When are you going to just trust him to do what his word said he was going to do? And they thirsted for water. They murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us out of Egypt? Okay, to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. So now you're sarcastic. Now, not only you're dumb and you're immature, now you got a smart mouth. And nothing wrong, nothing worse than being ignorant and ignorant and talking a lot. It's nothing worse than just not knowing and running your mouth like you know. It is nothing like not having a clue and running around talking and, and running your mouth and, and, and not having an idea. Now you're going to get sarcastic. Now you're going to talk about the Lord brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. You know what? If I was God, I probably would have killed them. Oh, y'all. Oh, I brought y'all to kill it. with that in. But thank God, God is not like man. Thank, thank God, you, you know, you, you, thank God. You know, your, your child keep taking you there over and over again. They're getting on your nerves and you like, you know what? If it weren't for the grace of God, I'd choke the life out of you. Okay, let me get on over here. So y'all saved, y'all don't think like that. But Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, what shall I do with this people? Listen to what he said. They are already ready to stone me. The Lord says unto Moses, go before the people. Take with thee the elders of Israel. Take thy rod wherewith thou hast smote us the river. 
take it in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of that place Massa and Meribah, because the chiding of the children of Israel, because they tempted the Lord, saying, The Lord is the Lord among us or not? Have, do you understand this? The first thing when trouble comes, we go, is, uh, is the Lord with me or not? Lord, where you at? Now, what, what audacity do you have to question where God is? God said, if, uh, David said, if I make my bed in hell, God is there. Uh, there's no place that's out of touch and out of reach for God. It is presumptuous and ignorant to question where God is. Where is God in the midst of this COVID? He's right in the middle of it, waiting for us to trust him, waiting for us to get our attitude right, waiting for us to repent and ask for forgiveness and do what is right and make up in our mind when this is over, we're going to straighten up and fly right. Lord, you don't have to test us like this is again. Where is God? He's in the midst of the storm. Where is God? He's in the midst of the fire. Where is God? He's right there in the midst of it with you and he's there to bring you out if you'll trust him. How dare we ask people, uh, ask God a question, where is God? Where is God? He's right there. He's there to lead us. He's there to guide us. He's there to sustain us. He's there to take care of us. That's where he is. And guess what? He's there to do his word. Once again, the people are tested. The sad thing is they allow themselves to get a place where, doubt, where they doubt whether the Lord is even with them. Do you, you know what? You got some people questioning the Lord right in this situation. Lord, if you're with us, why is this thing? Why am I? What, what, Lord, if you, where you at, Lord? Where, where are you? You mean to tell me you've been saved 15 years and you don't know where the Lord at? You, you don't have experience and experience with God and you still questioning where is God at? How long before you're going to know he's the God of the valley? He's the God of the mountain. He's the God. Uh, Y'all ain't going to hear me. He's the God in every situation. God does never sleep, nor does he slumber. They're angry with God and Moses because they could only be quenched the water. Uh, because uh, they, are, they are angry. They, they are upset. Their anger with God and Moses could only be quenched by water out of a rock. God used the rock to send water to a people who had kindled his anger. Now there is adversity between God and his people. They are angry because their physical needs are met, not met. And God is angry because they fail to trust him again. Uh, the people are angry because God has not suited their appetites the way they want them. But God is angry because they fail to trust him and know that he's the God of the water. God, there, there, there's a battle going on between the immaturity of God's people and God's uh, own reputation. God is angry because the people don't want to trust him and without faith no man can please God. And time after time and time again God is looking for faith and he can't find faith. All he hears is murmuring and complaining. God is angry. The people are angry and 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 and, and and, and everything is all the pieces but God uh, uses a rock to send water to a people who are angry with him. That rock is a type of Jesus. It is by his obedience and mediation and sacrifice that God's anger was turned away from us. God's anger was kindled against us because while we had an opportunity to worship him as God, we went to the beach. While we had opportunity to worship with God, we got caught up in cars and houses and money. Uh, the anger of God was kindled against us because when we had a chance to serve him, we we chose not to. So God said, okay, I'll just allow all of y'all to take a vacation. I'll shut down the parks. I'll shut down the bar. I'll shut down the club. 
I'll shut down the church. I'll show you that I'm the God. And guess what? It's not going to open back up until God says it's going to open back up. God had to show us that he is a God of power, that he is a God to be praised, and he's not a God to be played with. So God is angry, but he sends the rock. This rock is a type of Jesus. It is by the obedience of Jesus. It is by the mediation of Jesus. It is by the sacrifice that God's anger was turned away from us. Paul makes it clear and says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not have that you would be ignorant. How our fathers were under a cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized into the cloud and into the sea and did eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of a spiritual rock that followed them through and that was rock was Christ. He says, listen, I have filled you with the opportunity to turn away my wrath when God should have killed us and let us be destroyed a long time ago. Listen, we don't deserve it, but because Jesus came and that rock was came to be between us and God, Jesus turned away the wrath of God over our lives. And guess what? No matter how bad you think it is, you deserve worse. But, but I'm so glad that Jesus, the rock of our salvation, turned God's anger away from us. And I'm telling you, this COVID is not God's anger. It's his mercy. It's his grace. It's his opportunity to tell us, I still love you. You, but I need you to turn around and come back to me. This is God saying to us, I love you and I need you to understand without me, you can do nothing. I don't care who you are today. You can't run from a virus. You can't hide from a virus. Hide up on the rock hide behind a mask. You can't hide because the only body and the only one that's going to save you is Jesus the Lord and the King on this earth. You better lift your hands and praise God and know that if God don't pass over you, you will not live. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. We got to put the blood back on the doorpost. He says, I'll pass over you. I don't know about you, but I'm going to live and I shall not die and I'm going to declare the glory of the Lord and I'm going to trust God that I'm coming out of this better than I went in and you are not going to stop my praise I'm going to serve him like I never served him before I'm going to praise him like I never praised him before I'm going to love him like I never loved him before because if it had not been for the Lord on my side I could have been in an intensive care with tubes in my face not able to breathe but because of his goodness and his mercy we're here today we're here because we deserve to die we deserve to die we deserve to die we deserve not to live we messed up but God in his mercy and his grace is still calling unto us saying all ye that are heavy laden come unto me learn of me my yoke is easy and my burden is light how long is God going to have to get into our thick head that you ain't nothing without God you ain't seen nothing yet keep playing something better and bigger than COVID is on the way but if my people who are called by my name will honor themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways he said I would hear from heaven and I'll heal the land it ain't the sinners it's the church now let me tell you something the church ain't been a church for a long time God ain't coming back for no entertainment center. 
He ain't coming back for a bunch of murmuring, complaining babies that are selfish and want to have their own way. He's coming back from a grown woman. He's coming back for a bride. Jesus is not a pedophile. He does not come back for babies. He comes back for grown women. And the church is his wife. And he's calling us to grow up. You think Jesus is coming back for this mess? You think Jesus wants to marry this mess? No. He's waiting for the church to return back to being the church. He's waiting for the church to stop being a three-ring circus and be a place where his word can prevail, where people will come and bow their knee and bow their hearts and submit their lives to him and say, God, I'll serve you. I'll worship you. I'll honor you no matter what. God is waiting for the church to stop being the Apollo theater where you're in there doing a bunch of circus and tricks and entertainment and everybody's selfish and want to have their own way hopping from church to church. Everything you don't like, everything that don't meet your fancy, you, you out. No, God is waiting for somebody that's committed, that's going to hang in there and stand on his word and let God do in them what he needs to do. We need to understand something. God is up to something. Guess what? We need to hear his voice. Instead of being bullheaded, going to do what we want to do. Hello, you can't wait for the beach to get open. Let me tell you something. You got lines, uh, and I'm closing because I know y'all sick of me. Uh, you got lines around a doggone nail salon. People sitting there risking their life to get their nails done. Y'all ain't going to hear me. But I'm going to wonder how many lines are going to be around the house of God. Oh, y'all ain't going to. I'm going I'm to wonder. I, I, I was going to the grocery store yesterday and the line was so long around Chick-fil-A. I thought it was a, a traffic jam. I said, Lord, look at this mess. We ain't learned yet. We'll get in line and wait for Chick-fil-A and won't go to church. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You can't wait for the beaches to open. I can't wait for the beach. You better be saying I can't wait for the house of God to open. I ain't mad when you go to the beach, but stop by the house of God first. Give him the praise. I can't wait for the parks to open. I can't wait for the restaurants. Can we learn anything? Had the church learned anything? You can't blame the world. It ain't the world. It's the church fault. The world can't get to the beach because you there on Sunday morning. Those of you that are listening to me today, return to the Lord. Humble ourselves. Let's humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Stop being a know-it-all. Stop being stubborn and rebellion and going to do it your way. Put God first. Come back and make God. Put God back on the throne, please. Put him first, please. And he'll take care of you. I, you know, listen, I, I don't claim to be I don't claim to be super faith. I ain't claiming that. I'm not trying to be superior to nobody. But all I know is this. Uh, I, I know one thing, uh, that I love God. And, and I know that uh, uh, several years ago, I was having a heart attack for 12 hours. Didn't know it was a heart attack. Went to the hospital having a heart attack. Should have been dead, but I'm still here. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, not by any goodness of my own, but God know who love him. God know, God, God, when God's hand is on you, they can't kill you. And when it's your time to go, go ahead freely. But at the end of the day, I'm just a firm believer, COVID ain't going to take me out. I'm going to be here to declare the goodness of the Lord. Somebody got to do it. God is calling you back to him. God is calling him back to him. And guess what? You want to live and not die. 
But in case you do, you want to live again. And I'm saying to you today, come back to Christ. Those of you that are listening and watching today that are still with me, I need you. If you're watching and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, I need you to make that decision today. I need you to make that decision that I'm coming back to Christ. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, that he rose again on the third day. I invite you, Jesus, into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for Jesus who turned your wrath away from me. Thank you, Lord, that you're my heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer with me, let us know on the stream. Just text, I prayed that prayer with Bishop. Thank you for letting us know that you prayed that prayer. Backsliders, people that left God, people that got slack in your relationship with God, people that took God for granted and took your relationship with God and his church for granted, I want to call you back home. God is still standing here waiting on you to come home. Anytime you're ready, God's arms are open. He's ready to receive you back into his kingdom and back to, into his grace. Just make that decision today. Let us hear from you. Let us know how this ministry is blessing you. Let us know how God has touched your life on today. We'd love to hear from you. we love to hear what God is doing. Thank you for your testimonies. Thank you for sharing with us.